Archelon was a prehistoric giant sea turtle whose fossilized remnants were discovered in late Cretaceous strata in North America 100 million to 66 million years ago. The name Archelon is derived from two ancient Greek words, Archi, which roughly translates as being the first, and Kilone, meaning turtle. Its scientific term, Iskaros, signifies mighty. Archelon is the largest turtle ever to have been documented, with the biggest specimen measuring 4.6 meters or 15 feet from head to tail and 2.2 to 3.2 tons in body mass. It is known only from the Pierre Shale Formation and has one species, Archelon is Kairos. The genus was named in 1895 by American paleontologist George Reba Wieland, based on a skeleton from South Dakota, who placed it into the extinct family Protostegidae. The leatherback sea turtle was once thought to be its closest living relative, but now Protostegidae is thought to be a completely separate lineage from any living sea turtle. Archelon had a leathery carapace instead of the hard shell seen in most sea turtles. The carapace may have featured a row of small ridges, each peaking at 2.5 or 5 centimeters, one or two inches in height. It had an especially hooked beak, and its jaws were adept at crushing, so it probably ate hard shelled crustaceans, mollusks, and possibly even sponges while slowly moving over the seafloor. It also potentially consumed other animals while swimming closer to the surface, like jellyfish, squid, or nautiloids. However, its beak may have been better adapted for shearing flesh, with fish being another possible prey choice. With its large and strong foreflippers, Archelon was likely able to produce powerful strokes necessary for open ocean travel and if it needed to escape from marine predators. It inhabited the northern western interior seaway, a mild to cool temperate area dominated by plesiosaurs, hesperornithiform seabirds, and mosasaurs. Skulls of Archelon measured at up to 100 centimeters or 3.3 feet. Archelon had a distinctly elongated and narrowed head. It had a defined hooked beak, which was probably covered in a sheath in life reminiscent of the beaks of birds of prey. However, in the back, the cutting edge of the beak is dull compared to such animals. Much of the length of the head derives from the elongated premaxillae, which is the front part of the beak in this animal and maxillae. The jugal bones, the cheekbones, due to the elongated head, do not project as far as they do in other turtles. The nostrils are elongated and rest on the top of the skull slightly posited forward, and are unusually horizontal compared to sea turtles. The cheekbones are rounded as opposed to triangular in sea turtles. The articular bone, which formed the jaw joint, was probably heavily encased in cartilage, and the jaw probably moved in a hammering motion. Carapace The carapace comprises on either side eight neuralia, the plates closest to the midline, and nine pluralia, the plates that connect the midline to the ribs. The plates of the carapace are mostly uniform in dimensions, with the exception of the two pairs of plates corresponding to the eighth thoracic vertebrae, which are smaller than the others, and the pygal plate closest to the tail, which is larger. Archelon has ten pairs of ribs, and like the leatherback sea turtle, but unlike other sea turtles, the first rib does not meet the first plural. As in sea turtles, the first rib is noticeably shorter than the second, in this case three quarters of the length. The second to fifth ribs project at a right angle from the midline, and in the holotype each measure 100 centimeters or 3.3 feet in length. A rib increases in thickness in the vertical direction distally, as it gets farther from the midline, 
and the ribs are relatively larger and more well-developed than those of sea turtles. The second to fifth ribs in the holotype originate with a thickness of 2.5 centimeters or 0.98 inches and terminate with around 4 to 5 centimeters or 1.6 to 2 inches. Archelon has osteosclerotic structures where the bone is dense and heavy which probably served as ballasts in life similar to the limb bones of whales and other open ocean animals. The carapace in life probably featured a row of ridges along the midline over the chest region, perhaps totaling in seven ridges, with each ridge peaking at either 2.5 or 5 centimeters, one or two inches. In the absence of firmly jointed neck and pleural plates, the skin over the carapace was probably thick, strong, and leathery in order to compensate and probably support the shoulder girdle. Paleobiology Archelon was an obligate carnivore. The thick plastron indicates the animal probably spent a lot of time on the soft, muddy seafloor, likely a slow-moving bottom feeder. According to American paleontologist Samuel Weldon Williston, the jaws were adapted for crushing, implying the turtle ate large mollusks and crustaceans. In 1914, he suggested that the abundant thin-shelled, bottom-dwelling Cretaceous bivalves, some exceeding 120 centimeters or 4 feet in diameter, would have easily been able to sustain Archelon. However, these were probably absent in the central western interior seaway by the early Campanian. Conversely, the beak may have been adapted for shearing fish. However, it is possible the sharp beak was used only in combat against other Archelon. The Nautilus Eutrophoceras decayi was found in great number near an Archelon specimen and may have been a potential food source. Archelon, like other marine turtles, probably would have had to come on shore to nest like other turtles. It probably dug out a hollow in the sand, laid several dozens of eggs, and took no part in child rearing. Juveniles probably did not frequent the coasts even during breeding season. The largest Archelon, Brigitta, is estimated to have lived to a hundred years and may have died while partially covered in mud, brumating, a state of dormancy on the ocean floor. However, the long-standing belief that marine turtles brumate underwater like freshwater turtles may be incorrect given the high surfacing frequency needed to prevent drowning. How the turtle got its shell The riddle remained completely open for debate for more than 120 years, until 2008, a novel 40cm fossil was described from China, consisting of a turtle-like reptile, which only had half of a shell. The species described as Odontocallus semitestacea, which roughly translates to toothed turtle with half a shell, had a hard shell on the underside of its body like the plastron of modern turtles, but the upper part, the carapace, was missing. Instead, Odontocallus only had enlarged ribs, indicating that the bottom part of the turtle's shell evolved before the top. Since the fossil was found in marine deposits, one hypothesis describes the evolution of the plastron as a defensive mechanism against predators coming from beneath in a marine environment. The remarkable fossil of Odontocallus predates Proganocallus by roughly 10 million years, thus moving turtle origins back in time to about 220 million years ago. The Grandfather Turtle In 2015, another fossil further improved our knowledge of the connection between turtles and other reptiles. Papocallus rosinae the 20-centimeter grandfather turtle is a small reptile with significantly enlarged and flattened ribs. In contrast to the other fossil turtles, Papocellus did not have a shell and thus most likely represents a transitional form between lizard-like reptiles and turtles, what is colloquially referred to as a missing link. Papocellus rosinae is similar to other lizards, such as Eunotosaurus africanus, 
which also had the enlarged and T-shaped ribs, elongated vertebrae, and generally rather round body shape. Both species were terrestrial animals, which were capable of digging. Yonotosaurus was first speculated to be an ancestor of turtles already in the year 1892. Scientists currently argue that the enlarged ribs are a result of the fossorial lifestyle of both, granting higher stability during digging activity. It is part of the current consensus that Eunotosaurus already had the typical breathing mechanism of turtles, which is one of the adaptions resulting from a stiffer ribcage. Additionally, the skull of Papocalis shows certain characteristics typical for other diapsid reptiles, indicating that turtles are indeed closer related to modern lizards and snakes than other extinct groups of reptiles. Later Turtles Turtles after the Triassic split into two main groups, the Pleuroderes and the Cryptoderes. Although neither subgroup initially had the neck retraction mechanisms that would become their most obvious characteristic, Pleuroderes side necks later folded their necks to the side of the shell, while Cryptoderes hidden necks retracted the head by pulling their necks up and back. Both mechanisms require complex, coordinated modifications of the neck vertebrae and muscles. Living turtles are either Pleuroderes or Cryptoderes. Triassic turtles protected their necks by other means. Proganochelis by a collar of horny spikes. Paleocasis, another late Triassic turtle, by an extension of the carapace. Pleuroderes are now the less common group, restricted to the continents of the southern hemisphere, but once they were very widespread both on land and in the estuaries and shallow seas around the coasts. Sea turtles and soft shell turtles are all cryptoderes. Santana Calis, from the early Cretaceous, like its modern counterparts, had huge salt glands under the eyes, essential for excreting the salts that accumulated as a result of living off seafood. The metacarpals and short digits of the feet were still movable, as in land turtles. Only later did the toe bones lengthen and become encased in flesh, and the feet turn into flippers. As the Cretaceous progressed, sea turtle diversity exploded. The largest animal grew to a width of 4 meters and a length of 6 meters. Some flippers were lengthened by increasing the number of toe bones. Towards the end of the period, amazingly, some of the cryptoderes began an evolutionary journey back to the land. Present-day tortoises descend from turtles that swam in the sea, not directly from older land-going turtles. The anatomical changes involved are not well documented, but many turtles again became toe walkers. And while the number of scutes remained constant, shell ornamentation and shape varied greatly. Other Giant Prehistoric Turtles Archelon, of course, was the largest of all turtles. But there were also other giant prehistoric turtles, such as Maolandia, that was originally thought to be a lizard species similar to the Megalania. The Maolania were terrestrial turtles that lived during the Middle Miocene period to the Pleistocene period, approximately 20 million to 50,000 years ago. Some experts even believe they went extinct as recently as around 12,000 years ago. This creature had a massive head with spikes that they used to protect themselves from predators. These massive turtles weighed over 450 kilograms, or 1,000 pounds, were around 2.4 meters, or 8.5 feet long, and about 1.2 meters, or 4.5 feet tall. This mega-sized turtle had a tough shell and an armored head with a unique arrangement of spikes on top of the animal's skull and tail. The spikes on the side of their head prevented the animal from sliding into the shell, unlike the average turtle. Paleontologists remain confused as to why such a head existed in the first place. The most likely conclusion is that these animals used their skull to protect themselves. Even though many agree that the Meolania was likely a herbivore, it is also possible that it occasionally hunted other animals and used their horns for killing prey. Their spiked tails were also a worthy weapon for defending themselves against predators or other aggressive Meolanias. 
It roamed temperate climates and lived near the water. Until recently, scientists believed that these creatures were aquatic turtles, because most Meolania fossils have been found near the coast on Lord Howe Island or in mainland Australia. After the last ice age, sea levels rose drastically, killing off many non-aquatic coastal animals. Fossils of the animal have been found in Australia and New Caledonia, but they also possibly lived in Fiji and Vanuatu. Stupendemis geographicus in 2020, an 8 million year old turtle shell unearthed in Venezuela that measured nearly 8 feet or 2.4 meters long, making it the largest complete turtle shell known to science. This shell belonged to an extinct beast called Stupendemis geographicus, which lived in northern South America during the Miocene epoch, which lasted from 12 million to 5 million years ago. Stupendemis geographicus weighed an estimated 2,500 pounds, 1,145 kilograms, almost a hundred times the size of its closest living relative, the Amazon River turtle, and twice the size of the largest living turtle, the marine leatherback. The species likely achieved its colossal size thanks to the warm wetlands and lakes in its habitat. Scientists have known about the colossal Stupendemis geographicus since 1976, but the new investigation uncovered even more fossils and secrets about this poorly understood turtle. For instance, large caimans chomped down on their shells, and Stupendemis geographicus males had horned shells. These horns were likely used as weapons in male-to-male -male combat. Similar combative behavior is seen today in snapping turtles, whose males often fight each other to establish dominance in overlapping territories. Its size may have been crucial in defending against formidable predators. Stupendemis geographicus shared the environment with giant crocodilians, including the 36-foot-long or 11-meter-long Cayman Purusaurus and the 33-foot-long or 10-meter-long Gavian relative Gryposuchus. One of its fossils was found with a 2-inch-long croc tooth embedded in it. <laughs>